Ciao a tutti. E benvenuti al tavolo italiano. Uh, hello and welcome to the Italian table. Today we're talking about conjugating regular Italian verbs in the passato prossimo. A few quick footnotes before we start. Uh, lesson assumes you know the basic principles involved with conjugating Italian verbs and that you're familiar with subject pronouns. Furthermore, as with any other tense, uh, there are verbs that are irregular. This time they're irregular by having irregular past participles. These past participles will have to be committed to memory in order to learn them. They do follow certain patterns, but nonetheless, you're basically going to have to memorize them. Um, a list of the more common irregular past participles, however, appear in the vocabulary section of this lesson at iltabloitaliano.com. Like any aspect of Italian grammar, takes practice to really gain an understanding of and ability to use what you'll learn here. So, parli italiano. Pronto. Okay then, let's get started. Passato prossimo is most often used like what we uh, would call in English a simple past or present perfect. Mi scusa. It's formed by using either the verb essere or avere in the present tense, then followed by a past participle of the verb you want to use. For example, if you wanted to say I ate, you would first conjugate avere in the present tense and then follow it with mangiato, the past participle of mangiare. With the subject pronoun included, it would look like this. Io ho mangiato. I ate or I have eaten. Regular past participles are easy to form. You simply remove the infinitive ending and apply the past participle ending as shown below. Verbs ending in ARE use ato, as we saw above, in fact. For example, mangiare, meno are, uguale mangi, più ato. Iguali mangiato. So mangiare would be mangiato. Verbs ending in ERE use uto. Now these are for all regular verbs. <coughs> for example, credere minus ere equals cred plus uto equals creduto. So credere becomes creduto. Verbs ending in IRE use ito. Per esempio, venire <coughs> meno ire uguale fin più ito uguale finito. Venire finito. Okay, so let's look at our first uh, conjugation, ARE verbs. To conjugate a regular ARE verb in the passato prossimo. Using our uh, typical formula, we have conjugated auxiliary verb plus infinitive verb minus infinitive ending equals verb stem plus past participle ending equals conjugated verb. Sounds intense, not too bad. Here's our example. Abbiamo, which is to have for we. Parlare, which is to speak, minus are equals par plus ato, the past participle ending for ARE verbs. Hence we have abbiamo parato, we spoke or we have spoken. Parare, conjugated in the passato prossimo, simply put is io ho parato, I spoke or I've spoken. Tu hai parato, you spoke or have spoken. Lui le ha parlato. He, she, it spoke or has spoken. Noi abbiamo parlato. We spoke or have spoken. Voi avete parlato. Y'all spoke or have spoken. And loro hanno parlato. They spoke or have spoken. So you can see, all we've done is conjugated a verre in the present tense and put the past participle for the verb behind each of the forms of avere. And once again, the past participle simply parlare minus the are plus the ato leaves us with parlato. So we have oia, abbiamo e vete hanno parlato. 
Now let's look at an ERE to conjugate a regular ERE verb in the passato prossimo. Uh, equals the conjugated auxiliary verb plus the infinitive verb minus the infinitive ending equals verb stem plus past participle ending equals conjugated verb. Very similar to the one we just did. We have abbiamo to have for we, same as last time, but this time we're going to add credere to believe in the or e verb minus ere equals cred plus uto past participle ending for ERE verbs, regular ERE verbs, leaves us with creduto, so we have abbiamo creduto, we believe or we have believed. Credere, conjugated in the passato prossimo, simply put is, io ho creduto, tu hai creduto, lui le ha creduto, noi abbiamo creduto, voi avete creduto, Loro hanno creduto, which is I believed or have believed, you, he, she, we, all, and they believed or have believed. Once again, it's just a very conjugated in the present tense. Credere minus ere plus uto, the past participle ending for regular E or E verbs. So we have o, i, a, abbiamo, avete, hanno, creduto. So you guessed it, the I or E's follow the same basic pattern. Conjugate a regular IRE verb in the passato prossimo equals a conjugated auxiliary verb, infinitive verb minus infinitive ending equals verb stem plus past participle ending equals conjugated verb, our example, almost exactly like the others, except this time it's an IRE verb. So the past participle is ito, so we have abbiamo and sentire. Sentire to hear, abbiamo, present tense of avere, for we have. So abbiamo uh, plus sentire meno ire equals sent plus ito, the past participle ending. We have abbiamo sentito, we heard or we have heard. So if we conjugate sentire in the passato prossimo, we have io ho sentito, tu hai sentito, lui le ha sentito, noi abbiamo sentito, voi avete sentito, Et loro hanno sentito. Okay. Once again, avere in the present tense, o i a, abbiamo avete hanno. And sentire in the past participle form. So we took off the i or e and we added ito, the uh, past participle ending for regular i or e verbs. So we have o i a, abbiamo avete hanno sentito. I heard or have heard. It's important to note, you'll notice that uh, even when we put an auxiliary verb in English, it's have. It's not had. Um, that's a tense that's further in the past called the tras passato prossimo. Don't get those confused. So it's just I heard or I have heard. The passato prossimo is a past tense that, unlike the imperfect, happens at a specific point in time. Um, it's not uh, an indefinite amount of time as the imperfect is. Uh, the imperfect being I was swimming um, it started at one point in time and went on it's more of a line on the timeline the passato prossimo is a specific point on the timeline okay now so far everything we've talked about is used to vary as the regular verb uh, for instance noi abbiamo parlato noi abbiamo creduto and uh, noi abbiamo sentito not all verbs use a vary uh, in the passato prossimo, some of them use essere. So how do you know which ones to use when? Well, in the book English Grammar for Students of Italian, they say regarding auxiliary verb selection for the passato prossimo, that one, all transitive verbs, verbs which can take a direct object, use the auxiliary avere. Two, all reflexive verbs use the auxiliary essere. And three, intransitive verbs. And an intransitive verb is a verb that cannot take a direct object, can use avere or essere. Due to the third point, some memory work is required to determine which verbs use essere. You can find a list of common verbs conjugated with essere in the Passato Prossimo on page 53 of the book Verb Drills by Paola Nani Tate. 
Now it is important to note uh, that there are always exceptions. Um, I'm not going to say they're more common here than other words, but you will find some verbs that do not fit those three rules. Um, and it's just the nature of uh, the exceptions to the rule in grammar. So it is something that you're going to have to memorize. It's not very many uh, that are um, uh, conjugated with S that are, and chances are with use as you speak Italian, you'll become more and more acquainted with those who do use as sare. It's also important to note here that when you use a verb in the passato prossimo of the verb essere, the past participle must agree with the subject in gender and number. Uh, for example, we're going to take a look at the verb andare or to go. Now I do want to say, think back the ones we've done so far, parare, sentire, credere. We used avere, so it was io ho parlato. You would say that irregardless if you're a woman or a man. Noi abbiamo parlato. Okay, notice how it's o on the end, ato, parlato. So the endings are ato, uto, and ito, irregardless of number or gender. When we talk about the past participle, agreeing with the subject and gender and number, that means that the ending ato, when the verb is conjugated using essere as the auxiliary verb, the ending ato can become ata, ati, and ate. Okay, let's look at andare. Lui è andato. He went. It's still andato uh, because it ends with an O because lui obviously is masculine and it's singular. Think back to when you were learning nouns. Bambino ends with an O, singular masculine. Bambina ends with an A, singular feminine. Bambini ends with an I, plural masculine. Bambine ends with an A, or English E. Um, is feminine plural. Same thing here. Lui è andato. He went. Masculine singular. And we use e because it's uh, essere third person singular. Or we have le è andata. She went. You'll notice we change the o to a because lui became le. So now it's feminine singular. So we have lui è andato or le è andata. In addition now, let's look at the plural. Gli uomini sono andati. So the O became E. The men went. Gli uomini sono andati. Or le donne sono andate. Le donne sono andate. The women went. So do you see the pattern? O, A, E, E. We're just making the past participle agree with the subject when conjugated with essere, as these are. Remember, essere is sono, se, e, siamo, siate, sono. And now, as always, in the case with gender, when uh, the plural subjects is a mix of masculine or feminine, uh, we always default and use the masculine form. Also, if you don't know the gender of the subject, um, we usually default to the masculine there as well. Now let's take a closer look at andare in the passato prossimo. Uh, it's con uh, equals conjugated with the auxiliary verb, which in this case is essere because it is andare. It can't take a, a direct object pronoun um, or direct object. Anyway, so it's a conjugated auxiliary verb, plus the infinitive verb, minus the infinitive ending, equals a verb stem, plus the past participle ending that agrees in gender and number uh, with the subject, equals a conjugated verb. Example. Siamo, to be for we, or essere for we. Siamo, plus andare, minus are, plus Ati, okay, andad, andare minus are equals and, excusi, plus ati, the past participle ending for masculine plural. Siamo andati, we went or have gone. Andare conjugated in the passato prossimo is io sono andato or andata, I went or have gone. 
tu sei andato or andata. Okay, now I want to point out here, I notice I said, io sono andato or andata, and then I said I went or have gone. They both have an or in there. That doesn't mean as I have went or have gone. This is the masculine. Sono andato means I went or have gone. Sono andata also means I went or have gone. It's just that this one's masculine, or sono andata is feminine. Okay? Then we have tu sei andato, or tu sei andata, which those mean you have went or you have gone. Lui le è andato, or lui le è andata. Noi siamo andati, o noi siamo andate. Voi siete andati, o voi siete andate. And loro sono andati, o loro sono andate. So you can see it's really quite similar to uh, using avere. The only difference is, is, number one, we have the present tense conjugation of essere. And uh, we still use past participles. In this case, it really is a regular past participle. We just change the very last letter to agree in gender or number with the subject pronoun. So we have sono se e andato o andata, and siamo siete sono andati or andate, which would be I, you, he, she, we, y'all, or they went or have gone. Well, grazie mille. Thank you very much for stopping by the Italian table. I hope that that helps you in your understanding. The passato prossimo. Um, of course, there's much more information on this subject as well as all other grammatical subjects. The information is always online and free at iltavoloitaliano.com. I do hope you stop by and check out everything we have to offer there. Uh, more videos, downloadable podcasts, uh, printable crossword puzzles, photos of Italy, and news on what's going on. Uh, just uh, a, a wide variety of things so we invite you to come out to il tavolo italiano punto com uh, and uh, remember practice makes perfect so parlo italiano ciao